No. Well, welcome YouTube audience. You missed the first part of the show. You missed you missed a lot. You missed the D Live lead up, and then you missed the Facebook lead up, and What's here you up, are. YouTube. Paul yeah, Gordon and Cody Agora here, here to tell you about the show that you're about to watch for the next hour. <laughs> you're a Dingledork. Welcome. You're in Dingledork mode tonight. That's okay. I like I like Dingledork mode. Last couple I'm of shows so you've been kind of zombie. So I prefer tired. Dingledork to zombie. Yeah, I finally got some sleep. I've been making sales. The stress is kind of slowly lifting. Yeah, you did look a little little shell shocked, a little bit like uh cheese that's been sliced a little too thin that's <laughs> yeah that's pretty much where i've been at yeah so now you're more fluffy cheese that's good that's good fluffy we were, cheese, yeah we were talking about donnie 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 yeah he, he's basically like he's talking about the blockchain he's the crypto normie he is the crypto normie he is the the straight up and down regimented disciplined ordered and that's how you scary. go from I that's like how you go. From, that's how you go from Bodie to Brody. Oh yeah, yeah. If you Chris. missed the first part of the conversation, Donnie and I were talking earlier today, and and he was talking about being on our show with. Yeah, yeah. I I really like when I was on that show with you and that that other guy, uh, Brody. <laughs> it's funny because that's my nephew's name. I know. That's right. I forgot it. Oh yes. So be so we're, we're gonna have that's to have my... him on it. <laughs> <laughs> we're yep. gonna do this all show every time i start to talk go ahead what i oh you're getting upset when i talk over you no it wasn't upset it was just weird it's like every time you started to talk i started to talk at the same exact time it was just weird timing if you've ever watched our shows before that is not a surprise <laughs> that happens all the time <laughs> never never well it's usually the... Bodie interrupting me yeah, <laughs> we'll just say that. That's fine. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. But yeah, he was. Uh, we're gonna have to have him on again, talking about the uh, the, the the direct republic. I think uh, the the big sticking point. So we're gonna prepare ourselves because the big sticking point in his plan for me, and maybe we'll talk about it just a little bit, just as a teaser for a future show coming up. The big sticking point is he wants you to sign a contract that says that you pledge that you won't kill anyone or steal from anyone. And if you don't sign that contract, then he will forcibly remove you from the community. That's not exactly. Yeah, that that's the big <laughs> that's the big issue I'm going to want to talk about <laughs> when we have the show. It's going to be adventurous. I, I love his overall concept. I'm I'm of a it's mind... A, go ahead. It's a great concept. It's a great concept. And I, I think that what he has in his mind is a particular that may not be. It may be one of the versions. I think he has this idea that there's going to be this monolithic reality. A new okay. world order, if you will. <laughs> a new blockchain order. You know? <laughs> yeah. Forget the UN, forget Bilderberger, all hail the blockchain. <laughs> all hail the block. Wait, that was, that was, yeah. by the way, can I hawk your shirt now? You can hawk my shirt now. Go for I'm going to hawk the shirt on the YouTubes. I'm going to stand up if you could read it to the audience. I think all you right. should be able to see it. Yeah. Well, it says, free them all, let liberty sort them out, period. It's a rainbow of- hand grenade that says, yeah. Free them all, let liberty sort them all. And you can get this t-shirt at agora.threadless.com. That's agora.threadless.com. Are you are you ready for the first story? Yeah, I'm ready for the first story. Let's, let's, let's go into get the first this story. So, the title of the show, uh, by the way, you're watching is Daily Tuesday. This is the part of the show where I tell you what you're watching, because Bodie likes this. Are you ready, mm-hmm. Bodie? I'm ready. Can I do a spiel? Can I do the whole spiel that you love? Do it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Is Daily Tuesday with Paul Gordon and Bodie Agora. Today's show uh, is titled Humans Are Sluts. And here's the proof. On this episode of Is Daily Tuesday on iScience, that's what we're going to cover first. More evidence of human whoredom 
on Lozilla, Homer Simpson gets arrested. Seriously. And on Pie Ponder, shouting down that. gun grabbers is dumb. Yeah. That last title, that's all for you there, buddy. Shouting no, no, no. down. What? The Homer Simpson one. You didn't see the Homer Simpson one? Is it? Oh, wow. You didn't see that? That's amazing. You didn't see the Lil Zilla story? Dude, that's... I can't believe you, man. Oh. I didn't really want to come up with a title for the show that was centered around Homer Simpson. So that's why I switched the order. And, I mean, the I Science story is kind of a little bit lulzy, But it's sciencey. Yeah. It's sciencey. It, I, I think it is. Do, do you want Do you want to read this, or, or what do you want to do? Uh, I'll go for it. You want me go to go ahead. for it? Yeah. All right. So, humans didn't just get it on. <clears throat> humans didn't just get it on with Neanderthals, it seems. Yeah. Full disclosure, he's a proud <laughs> member <laughs> of the Neanderthal community with 4% of his DNA being from that noble. 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 Where are you getting noble from? Noble. That is racist. That's literally racist. You're referencing Neanderthals. It's noble. Noble. Noble themselves. Noble. <laughs> noble well, and, race of hominins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you got a problem? I didn't I didn't realize that you were a bigot. When did you become uh, a Neanderthal bigot? I've always been. Wow. You you do realize that those are my people. Yeah, but you don't have the forehead, so it's okay. I got the eyebrows. I do. No, not really. They're kind of jutting. Yeah, they, man, they're kind of oh. jutting. You don't have the shelf. I got the shelf. It's it's a little bit Turn not as give cute. Me a give me a profile. I got the shelf. Give me a profile. Hold on. Nah, you don't got it. I got the I got the shelf. Don't deny me. Don't deny you got me my heritage. You have a 4% shelf. I've seen people with like 50% <laughs> shelves. That's true. That is true. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, in addition to Neanderthals, it now seems that humans have also made it with another hominin. The Denisovans. Wow. Denisovans? You right. Good, good man. Denisov, is that what it is? I think so. Did I spell it okay. wrong? Well, so. apparently humans co-mingled with the ancient race on at least two separate occasions. Yeah. Yeah. So and it just more. means that humans interbred with other species on and off, probably dependent upon resources and geological geographic barriers and stuff like that. Bow, 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 bow. Let's get it on. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. If you see the graphic, did you see the graphic for the show? Um, oh, you, you, it's not you gotta see the graphic for the show. It's a yeah. it's a Dennis Olvin checking out a a, a chick. Eating. Can I say chick? Am I gonna get called? A I don't know. What it, that's a terrible. I don't. Yeah. That's yeah. He's checking out the chick, and she's like, "Hey, Dennis Olvin, what's up?" You get that right? She's flirting with him. No. I think anybody else who's watching the show, I think there's got to be at least a couple people still. Uh, watching the show, let's see. Uh, anybody want to comment and tell me? Does it not look like the Dennis Olvin uh, is being is being flirted on by the chick with the uh, glasses and the hair and the whatever the heck she's? It kind of looks like a Tide Pod in her mouth, though. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Probably. Uh, well, you know, all millennials eat Tide Pods. We all know that. So even if you're not a millennial, even if you're, yeah. Pretty much if you disagree anyone, with me. Anyone younger than me and anyone I think is stupid is a millennial and they eat Tide Pods. That's pretty, pretty much. much how everything goes. Yeah. I've, and I think we're going to have a situation much like the Neanderthals intermingling and the humans intermingling. We're going to have the Tide Pod generation intermingling with different groups, skewing that line and yeah. kind of blurring the reality. Well, in, the, in the case Who, of Neanderthal, it wasn't a blurring. It was a raising up. Then in the case of the Tide Pods, it's going to be regressive. In the case of the Neanderthal, the the OP as we like to call ourselves, the original people, it was more of a of a lifting up. I mean, we were we were just hominids, like Homo Homo sapiens, and then 
added that little extra extra power of of uh of op and it kind of made you it, who you are today uh, to be honest with you i think the traits of neanderthal man would be a evolutionary advantage so it would make sense yeah yeah they're superior yeah. i mean i guess you could say i'm a i'm an op supremacist is that is that bad Cause, cause if you mix the kind of strength and the kind of bruteness of neanderthal with the, with the intelligence, brain. with the intelligence of Homo sapiens sapiens, you're gonna have a pretty formidable monster on your hands. Yeah, kind of like, sh- sh- uh, I guess, uh, uh, Shaquille Cher? Hawking. You oh, get I a you Shaquille were Hawking. I, th- I was going for Cher. Cher, just oh oh, oh. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the, that's the apex of humanity, folks. Take it in. You may not like it, but take it in. The apex of humanity. So That's this story is, is from znews.india.com. In a paper published on Thursday in the journal cell, scientists at the University of Washington showed that more than 50,000 years ago, the now extinct... How, how do they know they're extinct? Yeah, they don't Are know. Are they assuming? Have they gone to the center of the Earth? Have they talked to Jules Verne? No. I don't think they've been... Th- I don't think that every inch of the Earth has even been explored for that matter. They no. Know. What if they want Asia. aquatic? What if they want aquatic and they're living in the ocean now? You don't know. So I, I reject your assumption that they're extinct. They could very well uh, still exist. Yeah. As Come a matter on, of Z. fact, Jake Paul... What's his brother's name? Whatever Paul, the other, the two Pauls, they they kind of have that Logan. denizen look to them. Logan Just, Paul. Logan, yes, yes. Yeah. The Jake and the Logans, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just saying. The people, the people that are way more popular and make more money and do less intelligent stuff than we ever will, yeah. Well, that is Could what pro- the market wants. Are you questioning the market, sir? Are you becoming a commie and questioning the market? I always question the market, but that doesn't make me a commie. Oh, I yeah, got, makes you I commie. called a commie today. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that was a good one. We're kind of going to get into that at I Ponder. I think that's going to come up in the I Ponder segment. Oh, yeah. We're going to cover that. That guy was triggered. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, well, I'll get to it, but I'll just plant this little seed for you guys. So you people who are watching have a reason to hang on. Kind of sounded like Bodhi was defending a word. And uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> yes. I was defending a word? Defending a word. Which one was this? Capitalism. I wasn't defending a word. I'm just saying, kind of. I didn't say you were. I said kind of. Like you were no, kind it, of, you were in the neighborhood. I was like, I was wondering, are you going to, are you going to swerve <laughs> fully in? You were kind of like, well, what's your definition of capitalism? Well, you didn't say that. He did. But, uh, he did. And then I gave, gave him, him a de- definition. And he didn't like it. <laughs> he didn't like it. Uh, uh, so, so the the back back to this uh, groundbreaking story. This is a this is a breakthrough paper. David Reich, who studies ancient DNA at Harvard University, told the Washington Post, "It's a definite third interbreeding event." Yeah. So that's that's what they're saying. They're they're saying that they now have a third interbreeding event. Now, I don't. Third. I don't understand how this is a breakthrough paper. It's not telling know. us anything new. Just reading the words. I know, but I'm. I'm just uh, David Reich here. Like he studies ancient DNA at Harvard, and this this is the breakthrough paper. Finding out that humans intermingled with the same species more than once. Yeah, I. I'm. I'm of a mind that if David Reich really wants to defend himself and his paper. This is the show to do it on, yeah. really. So, David, if you're watching, if somebody knows him, pass the show on to him, and uh, let's see if we can get him on the show. We can defend this this scurrilous. I mean, this is the same paper that's claiming that the Denisovans are extinct. So, I mean, I question the science right off the bat, right there, because mm-hmm. you made an absolutarian statement without absolutarian knowledge. I say we move on to Lozilla. What do you say? Yeah, let's do the Lozilla. Was it Homer? To... Yeah, yeah, 
yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta make sure I have the. Oh come on, where's the website? Oh, there we go. There's the website. I got the website up. Okay, good. Because this is a visual with this, folks. I want to make sure that you see the 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 website. And uh, yeah, I have a a nuclear bomb going off behind me. Fight me. That's just the way it is. Homer Simpson gets pulled over by British police, sort of. Do you want to read my, my funny interpretation? No, I think you should do this one. I, you, you, you can't make it sing like I can, is what you're saying. Yeah, because I didn't write it. Yeah. So yeah. it seems that Homer Simpson was uh, minding his own business, driving along a carriageway. I think they call him carriageway. A carriageway in England when he was rudely pulled over by a busybody Bobby because he allegedly, allegedly violated some arbitrary traffic law. Seriously, just take that in. Someone dared pull Homer Simpson over. I don't know how you feel about this, Bodie, but me, I'm already seriously triggered. So, well, I never knew Springfield was in Britain, so... Well, oh, what? Oh, he lives in Springfield and he can't visit Britain? What the heck is up with that? He what has a local racist license. bigotry are you slinging? He has a local license. Well, he can't he move somewhere it. and have a second life that his wife and kids don't know about? A secret family, maybe? What? That's are not you judging Homer's him? Way. That's not Homer's way. You don't know that. You only know what they tell you on television. Seriously. I guess. That's a I have more a lot. Faith in I think I have more faith in Homer because he reminds me of my dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then I love your dad. So, yeah. uh... If you think that Homer Simpson is just a cartoon character, uh, if you think that he's just a fiction, well, folks, you'd be wrong. And the proof is in the driver's license that Homer Simpson gave to the busybody Bobby who pulled him over. I like saying busybody Bobby. Did you notice that? It's a good word, busybody Bobby. It's pretty good. It sings. Bus busy Bobby body is a little weirder. Busy Bobby body. I, <laughs> wow. You know what? I wanted to have Craig uh, Voltrog write Busy Body Bobby. Now I don't. I want Busy have Bobby the body. There. Whoop, whoop. Busy Bobby body. Or busy Bobby. Busy. I can't even say it. Dude, I was doing the beatbox for you, man. I was mouthboxing it for you. You didn't play along. Dude, that was weak. That's weak. Now you, you just sound like you're throwing up a little in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so technically, uh, while Homer Simpson had the proper ID that shows he is, in fact, Homer Simpson, I guess there's other evidence to suggest that he's a local Brit, but that that's... I, for one, I don't know about you, but I, I do not want to dishonor the dignity of the office of the driver's license by doubting the driver's license. So for me... I have little doubt this is Homer Simpson. And by the way, if you're watching the video, you can see there's a Thames Valley Police tweet there. And it's a picture of Homer Simpson's license. Looks pretty legit to me. And that's Homer Simpson. He's doing his... Oh! And, and, and the Bobby, she tried to identify the driver's ID. And uh, he, he gave her his ID. I don't know what the freaking problem was. Apparently, Homer Simpson didn't have the proper freedom papers. He didn't have insurance. So the car was seized, and, and they, they reported Homer Simpson for, for driving with no insurance and without a proper driver's license. But he gave them a proper driver's license. So, I mean, at this point, I am thinking that there needs to be some sort of protest, like, like a second Boston Tea Party. Except yeah. in, like in, instead of tea, dumping tea, we dump, uh, I'm going to say, powdered, like just donut powder, donut powder into the Boston Harbor. And we don't call it the tea party. We call it the, the powdered donut party. I think a better option would be nuclear waste. Well, that's always an option. And uh, I mean... I've already, I, I think I, I said in headlines you may have missed earlier today, and I'm going to stand by that. Uh, I know that Donald Trump, he has a, a bigger button than North Korea's Kim Jong-un does. Mm -hmm. And I, I think now's the time. 
I think this is, yeah, I, I yeah. think you ought to let the missiles missiles go. So, how do you feel about this? Do you feel, do you feel aggrieved? Do you feel like in mourning? Do you feel like going? No, fetal? I'm just, you... I'm curious how they got a British UK driver's license and it says 28 Springfield Way, USA. Obviously, it's a fake ID. That's not true. I mean, it's really well done. It has the watermark and everything. It has the right code and all that. I, I just... I don't know how in their right mind anyone thought that would work. I'm going to bet that he didn't care. Yeah, probably. When you're battling the powers of coercive associate. Oops, I hit the wrong <laughs> freaking button. I picked the bump, and we're not playing the bump today. So, yeah, yeah I don't think this guy really cares. I think I don't think he cares at all. I think he's, I think he's in total, total troll anonymous mode, and uh, he, he, he does not give any Fs. I don't think he has many Fs to give. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Do you think he's an anarchist? Do you think we could get him on the show? Does anybody know who this guy is? If you're nope. from England, and I do have some friends from, from from the UK, if you guys know who this is, this is the Thames Valley Police Department. Uh, if you can figure out where this guy, this is in Milton Keynes, wherever that's at. If you know who this guy is, and you can contact, you know, connect him to us, we would love to have this guy on and, and, and hear his side of the story. It'd be great. It'd be great if it, it was really Homer Simpson. I'm holding mm -hmm. out hope. Oh, Ty's watching. Yay. Hi, Ty. Mr. Tayanaga. Tayan, no, Tayagananda. Tayagananda Swaraj. I like saying uh, your name, by the way. Wait, did favorite. a criminal hurt someone? No, Jacob. There was no criminal that hurt anyone, by the way. I don't know where your buddy Larry is, Jacob. I don't know. And uh, <laughs> Ken Odinger. Hey, Ken. How you doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, Audrey says she's not looking at him. No flirt, she said about the image. Well, Audrey, I just want to say I'm going back to the image. No, nope. no, you're wrong. This is just showing. It's showing the image in two different like perspectives. He's looking dead at her, but you can't tell that. You gotta, you gotta use your imagination. It's, it's, it's difficult. I know. Oh, the show. I was wondering what. Yeah, the show image. She was saying she yeah. was taking your side. She was saying that it doesn't look like there's flirting going on and. I no. really, Didn't you see I, my poster? Didn't you see my post earlier in the week that if you want to make a convincing Photoshop, you got to feather the edges? Was I trying to Photoshop? You should have been. Why? You know what? If you're the Photoshop <laughs> skiller, I should just like send you the idea for the image of the show, and you should do it. I'll just give you some work to do. What do you think of that? That's a fantastic idea. Is it? That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. You can yeah. do the images for his daily two. No, you can't because you can't get them done in time. Because I like to have the, uh, I mean, if you could get them done in time, great. But I like to have the show uh, notes and everything set by did you, 1 p.m. Did you see the Did you see the red herring I put on uh, A.E.'s wall? That would be A.E. Samon, by the way, for, yeah. for those of guys uh, paying attention. Uh, A.E. is our, one of our, I would say one of our resident Stadies, one of our token Stady friends, wouldn't you say? He's not a Stady friend. Oh my gosh, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's just misguided. No, he's a Stady friend, dude. He's a total oh, no. Stady. You know what? Somebody tag AE if you know him. Get him in here and, and have him vouch for himself. And I think that you're going, no, no, he's a total Stady. He, he's, uh, he's definitely not an anarchist. That's, that's absolutely sure. Uh, well, he's, anyway. still he's still convinced Trump defeated ISIS. Oh. <laughs> oh that's his, only comeback, his only comeback to Turkey using those fighters was that, yeah, they were ex-ISIS fighters. What does that mean? They were once ISIS. They're, ISIS still doesn't exist. You mean they fought with their ally that they had when they were still ISIS? Because don't kid yourself, the Turk Reich, uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, Islamic State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, <laughs> they get along. I'll just say that. They get along. So They're a little more than friends. 
Oh yeah, they're they're definitely more than friends. There's a little tongue in going on there. I'm 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 not judging them. Well, actually, I am because I can't I am, freaking it's stand. Scum. I really can't stand the Turk Reich. Anybody that watches headlines you may have missed, which is on twelve thirties Monday through twelve thirties. <laughs> 12.30 Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Thursday. If you watch that, you know how much I love the Turk Reich. I think yeah. we're done with this. I think it's I think time to get I'm to the itching. meat of the show. I'm itching to get to I Ponder. Are you, are, you, are you chomping at the pit? And I, okay. and I don't know if I want to really go off of um, shouting down gun grabbers is dumb. I think it, maybe we can, we can we'll start with that. But I want to oh, get I in. Just, that's just my trolley title. I know that's yeah. not what you're saying. That's just get me clicks to my Steam article, which was really just a shot in the dark to get you to think about what you were doing. It was really, it was really just for you, Paul. That was oh, literally I got a, that. It was oh, a letter to you. That. Oh, okay. I got that. I just wanted to make sure. Oh no, no, no! I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. You, you inspire me to <laughs> extraordinary levels to the point where I will sit there, stop everything I'm doing. And type out an article just to be like, mm, Paul Gordon's wrong. He's wrong. I, I've, I've done that with you, actually, a couple times, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. It's good. That's a productive friendship. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but anyway, I, I'll, I'll let you guide this because this is your thing. And I'll just foil off of you. Uh, the whole thing was uh, when Paul was producing memes comparing gun grabbers to the Nazis. It kind of pissed me off. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest, because it's kind of like this, this hyperbole. That if you're using that as an argument or using that as a means of communicating with the other side to show them that they're wrong, they're basically just going to dismiss you and you're going to look crazy. So you're not even going to. I, I, I was wrong. Paul actually had some productive conversations regarding it because it did have that knee-jerk reaction. But then for the greater idea i don't know if it really worked well let me just say first the idea behind the nazi comparisons was actually not to persuade them of anything okay. that wasn't the strategy behind that <clears throat> fair enough the strategy and and actually i'm i'm going to give you the strategy but i'm not 100 percent sure that i'm right i'm actually more inclined to believe that I'm wrong. Although I was totally acting within, I mean, and, and if I was wrong, I don't care. I, I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> and, well, you know, I, I, I kind of I, take I, a, I recently was wrong too. I, I, I kind of take a bit of a stoics approach and I got to adjust my camera here. Cause I'm like cutting out. I don't want to be cut out. There we go. Okay. So I kind of take a Stoics approach. I operate on what I know, the, to the best of my knowledge, the best of my ability. And I didn't really believe that I could fundamentally change what was going on. But I still felt like, you know, there's this area where I think, well, maybe there's a chance that I could affect the dialogue in some, in some way. So my strategy was basically social shaming. That's what I'm yeah. after. I am after, I, I mean, and I, and I believe I'm 100% right about this. The tactic that the gun grabbers are using is social shaming. They are attempting to create a culture where the mere idea of having a goal, gun is considered vulgar. It's considered gauche. It's like, you didn't even talk yeah. about that. So my effort is to combat that by saying, uh, I'm not going to defend myself from their attempts to shame me. Rather, I'm going to act like I, I don't. First off, I'm going to act like I don't hear anything they say, and I am going to act like like I can't believe these people are even saying these things. This is so vulgar. This is like this is like worse than Nazism. This is worse than championing child pornography. This is unseemly. This is. This is the worst of the worst catastrophes. How could anybody possibly believe these things? This is insane. How could anybody have a civil conversation with these people? That was my strategy. Yeah. And there's something to be said about it. I mean, it, it in a way, it works, but only in mass. 
if you're the only one. Yeah, I agree with really, that. You, you, you essentially kind of isolate yourself because then there are other people trying to have a productive. You have people that are trying to do that. You have people that are trying to just piss them off and troll them. And then you also have people that are trying to educate them on guns. Oh, you called it a clip instead of a magazine. Derba, derba, der. Her, but der. Yeah, but they're not AR. trying to educate them. They're trying to shame them and show them how idiotic they are. Right. And that's fine, but they don't care. You can only shame someone that cares. The, 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 the problem with the strategy of using social shaming is if... Even if you're a minority, if you are a significant enough minority, you can at the very least use social shaming in the aggregate, not one-on-one. -on -one. And I agree with right. you with the one-on-one -on -one approach. But in the aggregate, if you use the social shaming strategy and you are like a tiny voice compared to their horde, you're, 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 you're farting into the wind. And the stink yeah, is just going to come right back on you. That, for example, this is how I was basically kicked out of Ancapistan. Because you tried to socially shame them and there wasn't well, enough no, of you? I'm they basically kidding. tried to shame me for my ideas and my questioning, calling me a commie or whatever. And that essentially uh, caused this whole ripple effect because... I was kind of, a, uh, not necessarily alone, but, um, well, actually, did it really work? Did I really get ostracized? I don't know how many people have totally cut themselves off from you. I mean, yeah, I've you. actually gained, I've gained more friends from that. And you still have plenty of NCAP friends. Yeah. And, and you I didn't... really haven't cut yourself off from talking to NCAPs. No, I really haven't. And I haven't used shaming either. Have yeah, I? I don't. Well, I don't, sort of. For no, me. No, Go ahead. No, I'm. I'm like actually considering. Did, have, have I been using shaming in some conversations? Maybe yeah. in regards to to the scientific method and stuff, I'll I'll be somewhat condescending. You know, but when I you use shaming against me, even if you don't intend it, and it so oh, triggers me. And you know what oh, it I, is. Yes. Fine. What is it? What with you? It's when you l o. It's when you l o l. Oh, when I lol. Oh, I hate that. I hate that in general. It's not even, oh, I, it's not even shaming. I hate it. it. To me, I'm like, what do you say? What do you? Oh, I'm such an idiot. Is that what you're saying? Are you laughing at me? Do you think I'm funny? Is there something about my face that makes you laugh? You know, Joe. Yeah. Pesci thing. Yeah. 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 Sometimes. That's what it does. <laughs> So pretty, even if you don't intend it, it's kind of, that's how it's, that's how it's read. I, I used the lol on the commie guy today. Oh, I can't stand that. I used you, the, you want I to used, talk about the commie guy? I do want to talk about the commie guy. What was his name? Um, Andres? Was it Andres? I thought it was Andrew. Yeah. Was it another Andrew? Was it two Andrews? It was Andres. Battling Andrews? Nah, not battling Andrews. I'm not going to give him that, that kind of credit. I'm going to go was, and look and see what I can... I, I, I have the screenshots. I'm not going to oh, show you have them. the screenshots? Yeah, you, you sent can them. show them. Okay. Where are they at? Where did oh. you put them? Oh, here they are. What's this bad guy's name? This puppy's name? Oh, are you talking about the guy that was trying to... to Andres change? Rivero, yes. Yeah. Okay, and so you actually got the screenshots. You sent them or, in our oh, I, telegram. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. In the Telegram group. The yeah, Agora the tele Telegram group. Yeah, he was not happy. Well, what well, I mean, <laughs> he was fighting over a word rather than trying to understand the idea. What right. it is that you're really saying. And you gave him a definition. Now, I said earlier in the show that you were kind of veering towards defending a word, defending the, the definition of a word. But mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think you would have stayed there. Uh, he asked you for the definition. You gave him yeah. your definition of the word. Yeah. 
And then he went on to say it was Marx's idea. Well, I've heard that too. Yeah. That, that it was Marx, but I've also heard that it was... Not Marx. Not Marx. Some dude before him. I'm, yep. But Marx picked it up. But when Marx used the... You know, I used to... Don't get me wrong. I'm not a Marx fan. I can't stand Marx. I just want to let that... Go. I actually don't have a problem with Marx. Uh, he, I do. Yeah. He was an asshole, but he, he didn't he was actually... a total hypocrite astard. But he didn't do anything wrong. Well, yeah, he did. He, he treated his family he, like shit. I'd say that... that it wasn't even his that family. Role. It was his maid. He treated his family like shit. I'll say that. Okay. That's, now, that's, he put out his people, ideas. The ideas part, he did nothing wrong. Right. It's what do you do with the ideas and what you do, you you know, like I'm, you've, you've said this many times and I, I, I agree with this, is, uh, you know, ideas don't act, individuals do. <clears throat> So it's always on the individual. It's not on Marx. Marx didn't do it. Lenin did it. And, right. and 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 then it wasn't only just, I mean, Lenin, a lot of the things that Lenin, quote unquote, did, he actually didn't do. Lenin gave orders and other people did it. Although Lenin did do some things himself, too. And you want to talk about Stalin. Stalin did it. And then <laughs> some. He did the orders and the blooding. <laughs> he was, yeah. He, he was an he all round, well rounded thug. <laughs> He did. I'm not just an order giver. I'm also an order taker. <laughs> not unlike um, Putin. Oh, Putin. Yeah, yeah. Putin, Putin is a certifiable badass. In in all the best and worst ways. He could kick Trump's ass. Oh yeah, yeah. He's if if Putin and Trump got in the ring, Trump would be. He would be destroyed i'm thinking of a song by uh frankie goes to hollywood right now and it shows uh i forget it was it khrushchev and reagan i'm not sure who who they had they had uh, the russian leader and reagan i think it was reagan maybe it was just a generic american president i don't remember the song's called two tribes you remember that song no when i don't two remember. tribes go to war one is all that you can skull let's go no more let's go no more Never mind. I've never we'll heard that. Over that part of this show. <laughs> Let's pretend yeah. that part never happened. I've uh, never. But seen. you know, you're you, in that conversation that you were having with that dude. At what point did you determine that there was nothing productive that was going to happen? Uh, as soon as he asked for a definition and I gave it, and then he called me a commie, and basically kept asking me for a definition after I already gave one. That happens now, a lot. Go ahead. That happens. That happens a lot with me. People will ask me for an explanation or a certain definition or what I mean by that, and I give it, and then they deny it. Right. So rather they're, than they're you know, disagreeing with the opinion, they're disagreeing let, with my opinion. Right. Let's it, let let's come together and define terms so we can actually try to figure right. out what we're saying and have a conversation. So you say what's communism and or what's capitalism, and you define capitalism. You're like you're wrong. Like, dude, I didn't say I had the absolute, although most people, I'm going to say, though, that most people, when you ask them the definition of the word, I believe that most people, when they give you the definition of the word, they have it in their head that they're giving you the absolute definition. And yeah. then it becomes a fight over definitions rather right. than, oh, okay, Which well, that's your definition. Okay. Well, Which is, I, a lot of people criticize me and be like, oh, well, that's, a, that's semantics, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, it is. But let's talk about the idea. Right, right. <laughs> the idea, and and so when you say capitalism, and you know, for me, for the longest time, I say the word capitalism, and it's always been free market. And for people out there that use the word and they mean free market, then I'll have a conversation with you, and I'll use the you know for the sake of of having a conversation. Okay, when we use the word capitalism, we're going to use the. I'll, I'll be thinking free market, but for I can me, totally yeah, for me in my head. The word capitalism has changed meaning. Doesn't mean free market to me anymore. And there's there's historical reasons for it. And and then there's the fact that so many people today that declare that they're capitalist. I'm talking about the state state of unstate based capitalist. They're endorsing the very thing that Marx was talking about. 
They're endorsing yeah. a marriage of the corporation and the state. <laughs> <laughs> so you're kind of a living example of what I'm freaking talking about. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if an ANCAP is in front of me and they say that they're a capitalist, I'm, I'll say, could you define capitalism? And they'll say free market. Okay, well, then let's have a conversation about the free market. Yeah, what is free and what is a market? We're going to have to get down to that route first. Are we? Uh, Not necessarily. Depends on the conversation. It depends on the conversation. It depends what their idea of free is. Because a lot of the libertarian right, uh, their idea of freedom is subjugation, slave ownership, and beating children. So if, if it can be justified through property laws and property rights, then it's okay. Then it's yeah. okay. And that's their idea of freedom. So in that case, I would, I would end up disagreeing with their freedom. Yeah, and I, for me, I don't even have a conversation about freedom. Because I'm all about power. I'm always centered around the reality of power. And True. What, what, what can realistically or not be realistically done what what costs what to do <laughs> in essence yeah. what cost what to do let's talk about that so that's why i like my shirt that you made even though you know it's got words free and it's got liberty and i think those words are kind of ghosts for the for it, it's still <laughs> at a simple level of community it's a good conversation starter free them all let liberty sort it out it's like just my way of saying, dude, I don't know. All I know is that if you if you distribute, if well, I won't say if you distribute power, but I'll say if power is more evenly distributed, and it'll never be completely evenly distributed. There's no such, I don't think that's possible. I don't think equality is possible. But the more oh evenly, go ahead. Equality is never possible. Even f- physically, um Chemically, universally, there is no such thing as free. If if there is pure equality, everything would not move. We would be at absolute zero. Uh, we we would have to be. It would basically be entropy. Yeah, yeah. It would be an and entire entropic universe. That's equality. That is literal equality. That really, is what you really want. Really, boring. If you don't want any upward movement, if you don't want any downward movement, if you don't want any movement, if you don't want, if you just want a boring, bland meaningless life equality is for you equality is all equal suffering and equal joy for everyone in which case there is no friction and if there is no friction there's probably no joy so in the end it's all equal suffering that's what i'm gonna say so yeah with with that in mind you know i say free them all let liberty sort them out uh define free define liberty i don't know i don't have a definition but the 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 more direct and higher the cost of coercion, the less coercion you have, and what emerges yeah. from that, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I think at least at the top, we see this now: the cost of coercion amongst individuals, at least on an everyday basis, like on the street or whatever, it's fairly high. Um, using force in the workplace or beating up your employer or doing anything like that, there's a very high cost to that coercion. Yeah. Uh, And that deters a lot of people. But when you get to the economic top or the 1%, the cost of coercion becomes meaningless because they have the resources they can expend. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and we, because because the one percent or however you want to talk about it, because the top has like ninety eight percent of the wealth, and not just money. I don't mean money. I mean power. They're the ones they're not, that they have. They have, they have plenty of power to sacrifice and to to spend, to coerce the other ninety nine percent, at a, at a really low cost to themselves. Larry right. asks, "What does free mean?" I don't know. I haven't really found anyone that's given me a really good definition of what free means. What does power mean? I don't have an absolute definition for power, but when I'm talking about power, I can only give you my definition, which I absolutely don't believe is the absolute definition of power. 
And for me, I, I think of power as simply being the ability to act and to influence action. That's it. That's all power is to me. It's neither good nor bad. It's just, that's it. Right. I, don't, I don't have a positive or negative view regarding power. I think power is essentially how much, I guess, it is almost it 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 is almost um, a collection of how do how, yeah how do I say it it's tricky but it's basically coercion coercion over the environment and how being able to dictate how you use that you call so you're you're having you know it's like one of the reasons so that I kind of reduced I'm, power the way that I did is because the word coercion. When when ANCAPs use the word coercion, which I'm kind of with them, not exactly, but you know they talk about the NAP, the non-aggression principle, you know, and you don't you don't take a course of action against others unless they've done uh, something to justify that. I don't want to get into what justifies it, but uh, coercion has an implication of force for them. But I mean, it's a negative word. I guess to me, yeah. coercion can simply be influence it's it's it and there's multiple ways to influence action po power is what force over time or how who's, do you, who's, uh, how do you whose definition is that is that I, i'm thinking uh physics wise what is power work it's, it's the ability to do work or move things action action yeah yeah so the more power you have the more work you can do the more work the more you can, you do can act, and the more you can influence yeah. the action of others. Yeah. Which is neither good or bad. It just is. You can have you can have physical power, but you can also have social power. I have broken it into four spheres, which I'm a hunt I'm not at all settled on this. But so far I've been thinking about this for a year, and so far I haven't added to it. Who knows? Maybe in this conversation I'll identify something else. Who knows? Uh for me, there's demonstrable influence. This is uh, being able to show something that influences others to act. Then there's social influence, which is shaming and reward. There is ideational influence, a thought, an idea, a concept, a religion, whatever. And then, of course, there's force influence. Those are the four things. And, and most influencers are very rarely are they neatly in within any one of those four things. There's usually some hybridization that's occurring. That's what I have going on in my head. When I do my shows on iState, that's that's mm -hmm. that's how I think of it. <clears throat> that's how I analyze stories. I analyze it within that framework of reference, that power reference. What's going on here? And even my approach that we started off this is what I'm using in my head. My analysis is the most effective tool that they're using is social shaming. That's their most powerful influence. It's intended to trigger other things, but to me, that's their tip of their spear. If you could dull yeah. that, then you can blunt the attack. The emotional argument. Mm -hmm. and that's where we're at. <clears throat> and that was kind of my suggestion with the article, too, is, is they're, they're talking about... Basically, they're using their emotional appeals about their children. So, how do we address their children? How do we how do we acknowledge their concern? And by doing that, you absorb the emotional contact. You absorb the emotion emotional force, and then you provide another solution as an alternate. And basically, you're going to redirect that power coming to you that shame, and then you're going to direct it towards a more positive action. And I don't, yeah, I think, don't think shame. Think I don't think shaming is the way to do that. Because if you shame the, them back, they're gonna you're gonna basically multiply their resistance. Not sure that me. I, I I'm I'm of a belief, and I'm not hundred percent certain on this, but I am of a belief that no, we're in social shaming zone. We are in brutal negative assault. And negative attack usually works better than positive attack. It's uh, it's why people click on po fear porn way more than they do anything else. I mean, 
even what I'm doing with iState.tv, you know, I'm kind of making a conscious decision not to be so nearly fear porn driven. This isn't to say that I don't have any fear porn, but but yeah, uh, you, you drift that way sometimes. Oh no, no, I I've never said I'm not going to have any fear porn. I'm just saying <laughs> that I make like today I selected my shows and I'm looking and I'm like well, how many of these stories are negative and like I was like I had like six negative stories and I'm like I can't have that. I got to have at least fifty fifty at the very least. Generally, actually, I try for a six to four ratio. So it's something I consciously work on. But I'm not saying that you don't look at fear porn, that you don't click on the links. But if that's all you're driven by, and that is what most people are mainly driven by. I did news for a long time, and it was the negative stories that got the results. People respond yeah. to the negative far more effectively than the positive. Right. So in a way, you're responding to the negative as well. I am. I'm well in in my case I believe uh, I still believe. Now I'm not sure I at this point I'm not sure that my strategy is effective for other reasons but but I I don't I I have little doubt that I'm acting on a strategy. Uh an an informed strategy which is this is the most effective way for me to operate even though in my mind I'm really thinking and I think I'm right about this that I'm fighting a losing battle. I don't yeah. I don't think this is a battle that's going to be won, but I'm still like, you know, I have this little area and at the very least I'm not going to stay silent. <laughs> at the very least I'm not going to be one of those that just kicks back. But then I've been thinking lately. Maybe just maybe uh and I talked to you uh, about this a little bit earlier. Maybe maybe it's time to shift gears slightly. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that you totally abandon at least offering up a little bit of uh yeah, we know who you are and we know what you're doing. It at the very it, 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 that alone you're not going to be effective against the enemy so to speak if you want to think of them as a enemy, but, but what you, you are doing is the people you are fence. No, you're emboldening your friends. You're you're encouraging your friends to say, "Listen, you're not alone. You're not the only one that thinks they're nuts." You're not nuts for thinking they're nuts. So I think that's still something important to do. But what, from my perspective, am I going to go to the government and try to change things? I'm not. No. I'm, I'm of a mind that I still believe the most effective strategy is for people to actually start doing things that shows that they don't need the coercive enterprise systems without preaching to them that they don't need the coercive enterprise systems. Dude, let me tell you about 3D printing. Right. Get some 3D printers in your life, you know, when you, a screw is missing and instead of going down to the hardware store, boom, make it yourself, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that to me is more powerful. It's way more powerful, and it drives the concept home. It drives uh, that, the concept home. Now, the problem that's why is... I, go ahead. That's why I, uh, I wrote the little article today, The Modular Anarchist. Oh, I didn't Did see you read that. that. You didn't see that? No. Share it. Oh, man. Go ahead, share it. Oh, man. But basically, it was the idea that what, what I'm doing with flooring and what I'm marketing is decentralizing flooring. There's a problem with the centralized floor. You end up having to replace the whole freaking thing. Not unlike our elections, where you're voting in parties, you're voting in this. You're basically trying to replace this whole freaking thing, and it's really expensive, and it's really crazy. But if this wasn't this giant monster, if it wasn't this giant leviathan of government, of a centralized authority, it would be much easier when something goes wrong to just replace that piece. Right. I talk about that with flooring, and people get it like that. They're like, oh, that makes a ton of sense. Now, if you tell someone like that about the government and this giant centralized power, they don't get You're it as much. You're a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When really, just from a practical, economical, humanly feasible standpoint, the, the centralized government is... It, it's not effective. It's it's not it's not effective in doing what it says it does. It's effective in doing what it doesn't want you to know. 
You're talking to individuals. You're right. talking to people that have a felt need. They have, they need flooring. That's who you're talking yep. to, right? Yeah. They have a felt need. And so because of that, they're going to be interested in listening about flooring because they have a flooring need. Yes. And it creates this opportunity for you to share some principles that they can relate to, that they can easily understand, and they can see how immediately this type of flooring, I modular flooring, like you said, which I actually, I, I, it's on my list. I'm going to get a modular floor for our living room. That the beautiful thing is, you know, when something goes wrong, <laughs> a little spot gets on your rug. You know, you if you can't get it off. Thing. Yeah, you just replace the freaking piece that's affected. You don't have to replace the whole thing. It's really, really much easier that way. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't even, you don't need a specialized installer. You don't need any tools. You just pick it up, put down a new one. Larry said, Andrew just snapped his fingers using the wrong finger. What the hell's, man? I don't know what he's referring to. Is there a wrong word you used? Snapping my finger? Did I snap yeah. my finger? He said, Andrew just snapped his fingers using the wrong finger. What the, I don't know what that means. Is there a right snapping finger, Larry? Are you like the authority on the right snapping finger? It's just, I always use my middle finger. Really? Yeah, me too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Larry, what the heck are you talking about? What the heck? Dude, Larry. Did, did you have a bad gambling day? Did you lose a lot of money at the track? You're a little bit shell-shocked, can't quite process things, or... Eyes are kind of glazed over. Your brain's kind of shut his, down. Did not reach his quota. It's getting toward the end of the month. Oh, 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 that hurts. So, Ooh. so anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, my strategy has been to do the best with what I know, and. Even even though that's true, I do get emotionally involved. So I found oh, yeah. that this strategy is very difficult to to continue to do and to remain cool-headed about it because you actually, even if you are, okay, I'm going to intentionally take on this role of I am going to use social shaming as a tool, it, 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 it starts to feel good. And then you start to use it on other things. <laughs> And then you start to use it too much and you get too aggressive. And so it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous tool to deploy. And it's really dangerous when you don't have a mob behind you. When you have a yeah. mob behind you, it's not so dangerous. The cost of coercion goes quite a bit down. <laughs> well, it goes up for me if there's no mob behind right. me. Right. But it if goes you have down a mob for them, if, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I experienced that. I experienced the, the, the swarming of the mob and I was the lone voice saying, you people are horrible human beings. That doesn't work. And, that, and that's why when you decentralize that kind of power, that kind of influence, when you can break it down into different parts, if you can divide them. Ooh. Really difficult maybe to do that. It's not. Because, like I said, if you acknowledge their concerns... And you can find them, but then find problems with their individual approaches and divide them into camps. Well, camps. Uh, where they're going to be arguing with each other on the solution. Now you've... Basically, you're beginning to decentralize it. So what you'd need to do there is you'd actually need to infiltrate the groups and start to it. suggest contradictory strategies. Kind of what the yes. government already does to groups whenever it can whenever there's a quote-unquote threat. Which Basically. Is why, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an why effective strategy. It's it not one that I could realistically deploy, though. No, but there are ways to do it. We do it with trolling. We do it with all sorts of things. I do it in comment sections all the time. <laughs> For me, one of the things that I'm really... I'm hoping to advance is... I, I actually want to reach the the gun supporters, and I want to get it through their heads 
that you don't need to beg the government. You don't need to call your congressman. You just need to send a, a message wherever and whenever you have the opportunity. You don't even necessarily have to go seek it out. It'll, it'll, it'll find you. And the message is, I don't care what you say. I'm not budging on this, and this is my line in the sand. Come and get it, so to speak. And so long as these folks keep going after government solutions and imagining that they can stop this tidal wave of, of, of yeah, I call them youth supremacists. They don't all fit into that group, by the way, but there is, a, there is a, a core group that I will call the youth supremacists. These are the folks that are going around and they're saying, it's our turn now. Uh, you old people, it's time for you to die. E, we know better than you. We're going to fix your problems, and you guys could all should all thank us for this. Those are actual youth supremacists. They believe that the youth is supreme. So, <laughs> I too, I too once listened to punk music. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, oh wow, the youth never had that idea before. Uh, you know, but <laughs> but I think the 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 strongest impediment to this tidal wave that you're seeing is 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 just non-compliance it's just say i don't care and then the network with people that will help you if you need it like if they knock on your door people will come and help and so long as they're not doing that so long as the gun supporters are not doing that that tells me i have no strong allies right now <laughs> yeah um, if they knock on my door I'm alone on an island. And that that's a sobering thought. And that makes me think it might be time to maybe think of a different approach. And the different approach is selling 3D printing, selling mesh networks, selling the types of technologies that as they spread and as people begin to use them, whatever advances they're making now they're going to have an increasingly more difficult time holding on to those advances because more and more people will become used to being self-reliant. And yeah. they don't, you know, when, when it's, it's like, you know, what happened to so many Americans that initially chomped at the bit with the, Ameri I'm almost done here, Bodie. I know you got to go soon. What happened with the, uh, the, the folks that, uh, you know, the, the, the British decided that, hey, it's time to make more money off the colonies. It's time to rein things in. And these people, they were used to being self-reliant, self-sustaining. They did things on their own, and, and they didn't like it. So they reacted pretty pretty violently to it. And just, just, just do what you can to help be a self-reliant person and help others do the same. That's the most effective strategy. I don't think I anybody think anything else is going to work right now. No. No, because you can't reason with them. But that doesn't mean that just just to vent that I'm still not going to fire off. Uh, you people are nuts, and and yeah. sometimes to vent, but also sometimes to let other people know, dude, you're not alone. You're not the only one that thinks they're crazy. You're yeah. not the only one that that is is, is gobsmacked that the whole community, whatever you want to call the United States that isn't looking at these people and saying, are you nuts? You're not the only one who thinks that. That, I think, is important. That's pretty powerful. Yeah. And I think on that note, we'll wrap things up. You got anything, you got any last things to say before we uh, punch this puppy in the head, shut down this lemon stand? Lemonade stand? Uh, um, not really. Bodhi Agora, Agora... Go to Agora from the Agora. Go to agora.threadless.com. Check out some of my designs. I got some new ones up. I'm getting rid of old ones. Running contests. Go vote in them. You'll see them on my page. I'll share them every couple days. And I'll be back tomorrow on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon, for the headlines you may have missed show at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And tomorrow night, same time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. There will be an Is Daily Wednesday with uh, the One True Niz. And I do want to remind everybody real quick, again, I'm going to keep reminding folks, April 1st through the 8th, there will be no shows. And when I return the Monday through Thursday shows, they're going to have different names. It's going to be Is Daily Something, and I guess we'll unveil that on the other side of April 8th. 
And other than that, everybody, thank you, everyone, who took the time to watch this show. Really appreciate it. And especially uh, thanks to the folks that commented. I don't know if you got any D-Live comments. but, but I got some from Ty. I got. Okay, Ty commented on D-Live. Uh, oh, you should have shared them. I would have liked to have brought him I into said, the show. I said, hi, I'm here watching from D-Live. I hate the Turk Reich. Larry is weird, lol. Yeah, Larry is weird, and Ty, yes, I hate the Turk Reich. Uh, and on that note, everybody, good night.